thanks for checking in, and uh, have a great week. And uh, we'll look forward to hearing you again next Sunday. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. You all have a great day. I'll be Okay. Anyone wishing to check in to any 40 meter traders, then please come down. November 2, Bravo Mike. India Bravo Kilo. Okay, I got, uh, out of all that, I got Ab and Jim and, uh, and Mike. All right, let's go to Ab. Any of our BK. Good morning, Ab. How you doing? N3 FJZ here. Okay, I have completed the mixer. So here's the schematic of the uh, solder smoke DCR direct conversion receiver. And here is the, the finished mixer. And get the lights. There we go. So that's done. And the other module that I completed earlier is the uh, is the PTO, which is right here. I have not completed the audio amp or the bandpass filter just yet. So what I did was I had some other modules I built years ago. Here's a 40 meter bandpass filter and I have a uh, audio amplifier. I actually stole this from my 10 ear direct conversion receiver just a few minutes ago just to have something to, uh, to test these two modules out. Now I have, because my PTO tuning coil is such a magnificent stable uh, manned flight certified type of hardware. Uh, I had to cheat a little bit and put a little um, Veractor fine tuner just to be able to test this because it's almost impossible to tune this without it. Uh, once you let go of it, it shifts frequency. Well, it's just a product of the fact that it's so flimsy. Uh, so I actually added a little fine tuning circuit from a 1000 or a 4007, 1N4007 uh, rectifier, a couple of resistors, a 10 picofarad capacitor, and uh, uh, it's a, a cheap way to achieve a Veractor, uh, even though the diode is not a Veractor uh, diode per se, it does have that property when you use it in this manner. So it gives me a little bit of fine tuning so I can tune the, uh, the PTO coil, get it uh, partially on the signal or coarsely tuned to the signal, and then I can fine tune it with uh, this little potentiometer here. So let's see what we can uh, hear. Alan, uh, the speaker that he's looking for is the 270G2, 270G-2 speaker. Uh, that goes with the 75 So uh, if you have one of those or you know where there is one, uh, send Jim an email. And um, he, uh, he'd be uh, very appreciative of uh, <laughs> where, where he can find. Guy. Okay, well, Eric, the amplifier is working. Yeah, no problem at all. And like I said, Bruce, you sound louder on that 80-meter dipole than when you do on the 40-meter. Maybe it's just conditions today. But uh, 
KX3 Charlie or any other buddy else around, here's KB1HY. I think Lee might be listening. K2HAT, K2HAT, KB1HY. Okay, he said, wait a minute. <laughs> Back over to you, uh, uh, Mike, if you're still there. K2LOR. I know you said you go to bed because you work third shift. Uh, back to you, Mike. Uh, K2LOR, KB1HY. Three, Julia, Oscar, Charlie. I have Chris and I have Al. Uh, there was somebody else in there uh, too, Dragon. All right, and then there's Steve. Okay, we'll, we'll go with these three, then um, we'll come back. Okay, well, it's definitely picking up uh, signals, and um, there you have it. Um, I'm going to complete the other two modules and from the fact that you could hear a hum, uh, that is a, um, a malady that um, plagues direct conversion receivers and essentially what's happening is it's because of the, uh, the PTO is exposed, it's not shielded, so there's complex things that occur. Uh, I'm not quite sure there's uh, explained in the EMRFD there's a chapter on what's actually going on something to do with uh, the RF is being rectified by the uh, rectifier diodes in the power supply and then it does something else it re-radiates it I'm not sure uh, but that home is a, a typical byproduct of a direct conversion receiver that's run off of a uh, of a power supply uh, if you're running off of batteries, I understand that that is not as much of a problem. But anyway, um, what I've um, what I've done here is um, rigged this up on a piece of wood just to have something to test with. But only these two modules in the center here are the uh, are the solder smoke DCR at this point. So back to the soldering iron get it warmed up and uh, get the other two modules built and uh, I'll give you all an update on how it goes from there 73 everyone have a great day n3 fjz oh gosh I don't remember how that was connected to the radio but anyway he uses this for a pan adapter and um, really is uh, pretty neat uh, I love my RSP1A it's a, it's a nice little receiver um, so, uh, yeah, that is a really nice radio. All right, everyone, that was Chris, November 2, Zulu Bravo Mike. And, uh, Chris has for sale his, his, uh, Kenwood K2 
TS 590SG. Um, that is a 160 meter through 6 meter uh, transceiver, 100 watts. Uh, Chris is the original owner of this T of his TS 590SG, so he has the box and the manual. Oh, I Thank you. 